Carson Wentz is on the COVID-19 list, the reserves list, for the Indianapolis Colts. And this is after he had to deal with the whole foot injury and whatnot, and they were discussing 5 to 12 weeks, and then it looked like he was going to be the starter for week one, Yep. but now he's on the reserve list, and we don't know how long he's going to be on there because they don't have to provide specifics. I, I'm very curious. It, is this going to continue all season long with Carson Wentz? Like, it seems like it is something every single week with him. And it's like, obviously, this is not his fault, like being close, like a close contact or whatever. But we also don't know, you know, Greg Doyle, that used to work for CBS Sports, has been ragging him in the Indianapolis Star because they don't know if he's vaccinated. He won't speak out. It's kind of the Brian Harson situation that we talked about before. Yeah, and Doyle has been on top of him because he is—he's supposed to be the leader of this Colts franchise now, and he's saying basically that he's not being. And I don't—I ain't getting into that whole mess. But if you are put on the list and you have to miss any time at all, like now he's out of practice after being out with an injury. What in the world are they going to do? By the way, Sam Ellinger is also out with an injury, so we're we're down yes. to Jacob Eason. Yeah, I was about to say Sam's not even going to be the backup anymore just because of an injury to himself. I don't know what to think of Carson outside of the fact that I didn't think Carson was very good to begin with. I don't know that Carson ever in Philadelphia displayed any real leadership abilities or qualities just because you play a position that is supposed to be the biggest leadership position on the field doesn't mean those people are all leaders. I assure you they're not across 32 teams for the most part they are but there are teams where they're not and sometimes it's not even a negative thing or a bad thing it's just not their personality we've talked about this with justin herbert and the chargers i don't think he's the vocal majority leader of that team i think other people that have been in that locker room longer he he might grow into that one day but maybe he won't maybe that's just his personality and maybe you can be a really damn good quarterback to go out there do your job and your job is not to tell the rest of the team what to do or to to lead the team in in outside things. Your your job is to lead them on the field. And and as long as you're capable of doing your job, you're fine. I've evolved on that because I used to believe you had to be the leader to be the quarterback or it's not going to work. Don't think that anymore. My issue is this. I don't think Carson Wentz is good. I've never seen him to be a leader. So we're asking us somebody who's never been a leader at anything, doesn't have many leadership qualities or skills, to now we're going to hound him and crush him for not being a leader? No, shame on you for thinking he was a leader all this time. Okay? I've never been fooled by it. The second that he was not good at at Philadelphia and they were going to bench him, he immediately pitched a fit Whined and cried and wanted out. That's not a leadership role. That's not a, I'm going to do what's best for the team. That's not a, I'll get better and I'll earn my spot back. That's what a leader would do. But no, no. He looks out for himself. Okay. There's a lot of guys out there that'll say this is a business and he has every right to do that. And that's fine. But don't call that person a leader. Okay. I, I you, you can't, you can't with both sides of your mouth say, He's a leader, and he's going to do what's best for the team, and he needs to be doing what's best for himself. Those two things aren't the same because him and the team aren't the same. Agreed. Agreed. So shame on these people for expecting him to be a leader. He's never been one. And and if you say he has, I would like to see the evidence of that because I've got about four months of football where he was good at football, but he was really young, and he was damn sure not the leader of that team. He he was a junior when he left college, wasn't he? Yes. So he he's still young, like a young guy. And that's not an excuse. That is, at some point, you figure he's going to grow into the role, and it has not happened. And well, hang on. Knows? What, no, but again, what that's evidence not, it's do not we have job. that he's going to grow into that? We, we got zero evidence. I say, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, at some point, if you are an NFL franchise and you were spending that much money on him, you expect him to to eventually be worth it, right? Yes. And the Colts, I think, just got jobbed on this thing. Like, I well, think- then, hang on now. Hang on. No. 
screw that. They didn't get jobbed. Everybody in the world knew what this guy was. Yes. Not good at football. And we all just assumed so many people thought Frank Reich is magic and can fix him. I love Frank Reich. I have sang his praises on this show. Last year to start the season off, we did our breakdown of the Colts, and I said, I used the words, he's a motherfucking wizard. Okay? I believe him to be that good. As soon as he made the call to bring Wentz in and think I was good with him once, I'll be good with him again. I'm out. I'm out. You're yeah. you're letting something that happened in the past cloud your judgment, and you're not thinking clearly. You're not looking at him from an analytical perspective. You're not looking at this from, from a football-only perspective. You and him got close for three months of the year when he was really good at football. And y'all and then, had a special season and then with you a really even special won, team. You even won an, a uh, an NFL championship without him. Yes, that That's special season, something. that special team. I don't, I don't know why you would give up assets. I don't know why you would pay a salary. And I know that the Eagles are paying the bulk of the salary this year. Doesn't matter. Next year you're going to owe him thirty million dollars. Why the hell would you pay this guy thirty million dollars when you could take a rookie and do it for nothing? But so so here's the deal. This year, if they were to cut him this year, his dead cap is thirty five point four million dollars. But I don't year, know how much of that they're paying because the Eagles are paying the bulk of his contract this year. Right, right, right. So if you if you just roll through this season, next year his cap hit is twenty eight point two million dollars. Now that's to the Colts. That's, that's not to, to the, the Eagles, I think. But his dead cap is fifteen million if you cut him next yep. year. So you get through this season. But why give up assets? Why do, why get in bed with this thing to begin with? I wish I could tell you. I have. It's not like there were not options. No, no. I mean, there were, there were plenty, plenty of options. And then, you had draft picks. You there were quarterbacks in this draft that you could have gotten, or you could have went and signed one of these other quarterbacks. The multitude of guys. Get into the run-ins with with Sam Darnold. He didn't he didn't go for a high price. I would have much rather have Sam than Carson. Get get into the Teddy Bridgewater sweepstakes. I think Teddy Bridgewater is substantially better than Carson Wentz. Like I, there's a lot of dudes you could have gone out and made moves for and gotten. And trying to roll with the retread just because he had success for three a or short four window of time like, that we never saw before that, and we've never seen after that. Yeah. But somehow people have convinced themselves that that little window of the world that we had Carson Wentz in, that's the real him. I think that's weird. If yeah. I go to a place once and I get the greatest meal I've ever got, okay, and, and then I go to another place, start it by that same company, same people, different place, and that meal is also great. Yes. And then every time I go back to the original place, the meal is shit. Why would I think that magically they're going to just stop being shit? It's a great question. It's it's like because you had it one time and it was so one good. One time for a short window of time, he was really good. And now he's not. I don't but get he it. Wasn't bef- he wasn't before that. <laughs> and he wasn't after that. And the guy that we know is not good stepped into his role and was just as good as him. Yeah, that season. Yeah. That year. Why do we not real? How how are these people not smart enough to put two and two and two together to put this puzzle together to figure this thing out? So no, me. this this guy from Indianapolis that is from CBS that is writing him and whatever. Take all the pop shots you want. That's fine. I think those people have an agenda. We we have people out there, Gary, that really care about COVID. And then you have people out there that don't give a shit about COVID. All right. Yeah. Just like teams, just like organizations. So do media guys. Okay. And the guys that really care about COVID being a thing are going to ride the hell out of every one of these quarterbacks and players that we assume are not vaccinated the whole year. And they're going to make that the story. My issue is, is if they get COVID and they cost their team wins, then you can make it a story. But preemptively trying to make it a story, now you're just trying to predict the future. Okay? Yes. If he gets COVID now but never gets it for the rest of the season, you're shitting on a guy because you're expecting something to happen. Let's wait and see when something happens, okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. That's that's my only request is I'm I'm not trying to predict the future of any of this stuff. I'm using the information I have about this player being good or bad at football. 
and a, a leader or not. And I don't have any evidence that he's ever been a leader. So for you to think that he's coming into Indianapolis to be a leader, that's on you, man. You've been fooled. You were duped. Yes. Yes. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.